how's it going everybody? My name is Armando. Welcome back to another Dead Frontier video, everybody. So guys, it's been quite a minute, everybody. God, I think my last video was more than a month ago. I'm so sorry about that, guys. But as you can tell by the screen in front of you, I finally hit level 325, man. So I've been very busy in this game. As you can tell, I've not been slacking on playing, so yeah, and also my stats here have improved tremendously here. So yeah, a lot has happened, but we are not here to show off. We are here for the Impeller Crossbow. So honestly speaking, I should have done this the first day it came out, but obviously, like I said, I've been very busy with this game. And I've been really just grinding and grinding and grinding, trying to get to the max level before the new update comes out, which we still have to talk about, by the way. But before we get to any of that, um, I just want to say thank you to those that have been supporting me all this time. I've been loving the support. I've been loving you guys just motivating me. And I just can't say enough how much I thank you guys, all right? So getting all of that mushy stuff and that intro out of the way, let's just hop right into it and talk about the topic at hand, which is the impeller crossbow. So guys, let's look at the stats real quick, okay? So the impeller crossbow, it has unlimited ammo, which is a huge plus, all right? Anything unlimited in this game is pretty much viable for a looter, all right? It doesn't take up too much space in terms of ammo for your inventory, and therefore you're able to loot for longer periods of time, therefore maximizing the profit per hour, okay? So obviously, like we said, unlimited ammo, it has a 16 round capacity, very slow reload speed, so get that reload speed skill up. Average attack speed, average accuracy, very high critical chance, so you're gonna hit a lot more critical hits than the, than the average weapon, which is a very nice thing to have. And of course, you need 120 rifle skill required, okay? The ability of this crossbow is it has a four round burst, which is pretty nice every time you shoot the weapon, it shoots four rounds at a time. All right, damage per hit is, or per burst is 15 times four, or 75 times four, or hits per second, 7.5. Average DPS at 124, reloading 100.7. Average damage per second. 112.5 so overall it is a very well balanced weapon okay so without further ado let's just get rid of this barricade and i'm going to take us to the hospital to see how well it performs out there right so yeah let's go so yeah overall it's a really really good weapon it's not the worst thing in the world as you can tell i can kill pretty much a boss a boss a mob in a, a burst it's a burst weapon and so in one burst i can kill an enemy and that's, as you can tell from that example, that's where I also have a bit of an issue with this weapon. It's pretty much, if you hit a burst and it's not all critical hit, it can kind of screw you a bit over, all right? Not terribly, but it can get very overwhelming. So when I first got this weapon, it was during the week event, all right? It was, well, obviously the event. And looting with it, at first I thought it was bearable, but there, see, if I just don't hit all critical hits, or if let's say I'm just not feeling it and I just suck at aiming for a bit it can be a little bit annoying all right like i said unlimited weapon it's not the worst weapon in the world all right but honestly it, it, it could be a little better all right but like i said if you pair this up with a dawn mesh you're pretty much invisible to these guys dawn mesh having the ability to not be detected which is a very nice ability is pretty much overpowered and pairing this with that armor is just insane. But yeah, it, it, it's like I said, it's not the worst thing in the world. I would do 120 damage more or less with it. And you know, without the boost, I would probably do like 72 damage per hit, which again, isn't terrible. Oh, Katana. But as you can tell, I have no difficulties looting the hospital with this weapon when it's just looting, all right? Uh, when there's aggro, that's where pretty much you begin to lose a bit of faith in the weapon all right when say you're pretty much looting and you get a random horde or a band yeah a random aggro spike uh it can be a little annoying using this weapon to the point that i just use the scorcher but again this weapon is pretty much just to keep it on the quiet and just get through the area without causing much of a hitch if you get my drift yeah that's really nice i mean it, it took two bursts to kill him but it's not bad but let's test it with some aggro, okay? Let's see how it does against a group of mobs. Another thing I love about this weapon is the knockback. The knockback is very, very nice to have. It's It, it pretty much keeps them at bay, stops them from attacking. So if you're able to stop and attack with this weapon, it's very satisfying. You know, like let's say there's about a swing like that, the knockback on this weapon stops that animation and it gets you and it gives you the advantage to just back pedal and get in a position where you're able to 
you know, fight them a little bit more comfortably. But yeah, that like 119 damage per, per or per hit is a little bit annoying here because yeah, it's just not gonna do the same as like one shotting them one by one with a rust hound, which is not a bad thing. You know, that's where I kind of give this weapon a bit of a leeway. Okay, the rust hound can pretty much one shot anything. For me, I do 740 damage, and that's nice. But it's very slow. With this thing, you pretty much just slowly but surely clear the aggro away. Because of that knockback you have in the weapon, you're able to pretty much maneuver a little bit better around the aggro spike. Or whatever you're able to do out here, okay? But you want to keep your aim a bit more consistent. Because if you're constantly missing every shot, it gets to be a little bit annoying to use this weapon. Whereas, if you do miss with a Rouse Hound, well, you missed, you know? And the next shot is almost a guaranteed critical hit and you're pretty much able to clear that zombie away from your screen and move on to the next threat which is you know the next zombie in front of you oh god i should probably just yeah yeah let me just get away from these guys <laughs> and also if you don't have a sand score to, cl to clear out the horde again this isn't a bad this isn't a bad option to have man dude this is 70 this is almost 75 percent speed boost is really nice and with enough skill you're pretty much able to just more or less just take care of anything that comes your way out you know you know what i'm saying like again not terrible, not the worst, alright? Now onto the things I don't like about this weapon, uh, I would say just honestly the damage. Uh, you're not always going to hit a critical hit with this weapon, there's always that chance that you're just going to hit a normal hit. And that normal hit when it comes through is where it kind of fails the most, in my opinion, is where it gets a little bit of annoyance. Uh, like that for example. Whereas with the Rouse Hound it's a one shot one kill if you hit a critical hit. Oh jeez, yeah that, see, that's where it gets a little crazy. <laughs> And you're able to pretty much just, yeah, it, it can kind of mess you up a little bit. When I when I was in situations where I was in a in the hospital and the random horde just came out of nowhere, I would pretty much get surrounded. And if I were to not hit a critical hit, pretty much there's no knockback, and I will get smacked. And there you go, there goes half my armor because you know these guys do tremendous damage. But anyway, uh, I think I said enough about the Impaler, I don't think this review needs to go on for long. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and barricade it, right? Yeah, let's just, yeah, let's just, let's just get out of here, this is getting a little crazy. Oh, grinder! So all in all, my last, last sayings for this weapon, would I buy this weapon? Honestly, when comparing it to a Rust Hound, which is worth more or less 20 mil right now on the market, Actually, yeah, let's go explore that right now. Hold on, let me uh, let me find the resources. Where are you, mother sucker? So here we go. Uh, if you look at the Impaler, the Impaler right now is worth 43 mil, while the Rust Hound at the current market is worth 20 mil. So yeah, huge difference. Preferably in my case, I 100% prefer the one shot, one kill with the Rust Hound. Uh, but that's just me, alright? Uh, some people do love the unlimited aspect. So, it really is up to preference. I, for one, prefer the Rust Hound because it's a one shot, one kill. If I missed once, who cares? The next shot is more or less a guaranteed death for these guys. While the Impaler does significantly less damage than the Rust Hound, but it has one huge advantage over the Rust Hound, and that is the unlimited, unlimited ammo on it has great knockback and it's a four round burst all right but like i said everybody has a preference i for one prefer the rust hound me frankly i wouldn't buy this thing only because one rust hound is 20 mil cheap 23 mil cheaper than this thing uh but if you're going for a very quiet build a very like silent type build where you're basically not bothered as much by the aggro highly recommend it all right between this and the barnell i highly recommend the impaler all right it's just it's quicker knockback and unlimited all right but yeah guys overall like i said it's not a bad weapon i like it it's i'm a looter so i highly recommend this to anybody who's a looter but yeah for me frankly rust hound i don't care about the aggro all around me sand scorcher is the worst case scenario and i have the speed boost to pretty much handle that aggro with no problem so yeah guys i think i rambled off long enough and without further ado, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I will see you guys very soon, all right? Love you guys. I'll see you soon. Sarah Ronald signing off. Peace.